I do have um, a friend actually though, um, who's in a 1950s um, style, like submissive relationship with her husband and they're very happy. Wait. But she's also very rewind. Very rewind. They're, in a, they're in a 1950s, like, is in they're cosplaying the whole time. Um, no, like oh. they're, they're. Yeah, you got this. me excited there for a second. I was like, <laughs> that would be nice. Is he wearing like a a bowler hat, like a top hat, and like <laughs> the whole time? That oh, would goodness. be fucking amazing. That would be, that would be super impressive. Um, but they're, you said they were in a 1950s style. Uh yeah, so basically, I mean, explain. their relationship has shifted as um she works a lot now, and you know you can't you can't commit as fully to like a twenty four seven when you're working. Um, but at one point in their relationship, it was best for her in her healing process to stay home, do like the cooking, the cleaning, like have like this sort of high femme. 1950s traditional housewife female yeah like traditional housewife sort of style and that really worked for her it was super beneficial um to like her anxiety it was just like it was really healing and transforming for her and their mm. relationship is um very impressive to me because that that would be like the one relationship where i can think of as like the woman being um the inherently more submissive but like as a person she's very dominant and I feel so, like she. It, so that was like the situation in the household, but they also had BDSM elements in their private life. Yeah, even before, um, um, from what she tells me, before they were able to like fully understand like what it was that they were doing, they had already implemented like um, just like the sort of like structure that BDSM can allow, mm -hmm. um, and also like their play has a lot of BDSM in it. She is an educator in the industry. Mm. Um, so. uh, there's there's something here like I find there's a lot of elements in BDSM dom sub relationships, mm -hmm. particularly with when it's a male led like the male female dynamic when it's a male led female mm -hmm. submissive relationship that I think a lot of vanilla non fetish people there's a lot of elements in that that they could take and implement into their personal private lives yes which would significantly improve their relationships oh yeah i think uh so for example I, I, have, I have a good friend back in australia he's a retired military veteran uh don't like he's a lifestyle dom mm -hmm. rigor he has five wives and two girlfriends mm -hmm. and they all live with him on his rural property in new south wales how does he balance that uh, he's retired. That's how he balances. Oh, uh, okay. It's yes, his full time yes, job. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> he's retired in in the countryside. There's no more. There's no distractions. It's mm -hmm. literally him managing these seven women. Mm -hmm. uh, five of them are his wives, and I actually, like they're not wives in the legal sense. They're wives in the submissive sense. In, yeah. Like they're collared, and they've he's gone. They've gone gotcha. through various contract levels mm -hmm. to get to that stage, and they are so fucking happy. That's amazing. All of these women are so, They adore him. See, he sounds like a great male dom as far as like, from everything I can tell, it's he's got a really, really great situation. If you have seven happy wives. <laughs> You're doing something right. Uh, I think five of them are wives. They've they've been with him for a while, mm -hmm. and two are girlfriends. I think maybe it's maybe you might have one girlfriend now. The last photo I saw, maybe one of them might have rotated out. Mm -hmm. That's fine. They sort of come and go. <laughs> rotated out. Um, I think it's the structure. I think it's the, it's the let's let's and let's stick to an example of like a male led. Relationship, yeah. right? I think it's the structure where the guy is telling her, like, he's alleviating the responsibility of thinking mm -hmm. about stuff from her because mm -hmm. he's telling her, here's how, here's what you have to do to please me. Here's mm -hmm. like, here's the guidelines and the boundaries. Yeah. And if you step out of line, then there's going to be, mm -hmm. you know, spankings or whatever, whatever kind yeah. of punishment we, we determine. Like, be, be they good spankings or bad spankings. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. I think that's something that's actually really, really applicable to every relationship. Yeah, definitely. And that can go vice versa um, either way because, like, in, in male-led or femme-led relationships, essentially there's one person being like, this is how we are going to structure things in order to make life um, elevated for both you and I, right? Because it wants to simplify something for the submissive. The submissive doesn't have to have anxiety necessarily about like what they need to do they just have to do something well 
you know mm. and that's the thing is like they just have to do something well but i find what that tends to be what lacks really in bdsm structures that fail is just huh. not having that sort of actual rigid structure because if you don't if it's a lot more like laissez-faire huh. there's i feel like a lot more room for error in a way and then people are fucking up and people are getting punished for fucking up and they didn't realize they could they were fucking up yeah definitely i've had that happen where it's just huh. like uh, the, the rules weren't clear and defined and i didn't know i was doing something bad <laughs> right 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 because i said like when i see relationships that work and then i've been working for a while mm -hmm. it's everyone that it's the that the people know their roles yes and they're not competing with one another yes for their roles mm 